All right, welcome to the first video of my Intro to Programming series. In this, in this first video, what we're going to cover is what is computer programming, uh, what some of the programming languages are, some of the commonality between programming languages, and uh, just touch on what ob something called object-oriented programming, or otherwise known as OOP, and also get into the, uh, a little bit of an overview of what the integrated development environments are. First of all, what is a computer program? Well, a computer program is, is uh, something that takes some form of input, whether it be a keystroke on your keyboard or a mouse, or maybe uh, some data from a sensor of some sorts. It, then it applies some logic to uh, that data and uh, it, it could be a calculation, it could be it could be just about anything, anything that you could uh, logically apply to data. Uh, and then it, it gives an output, and that output might be uh, some characters on a screen, it might be a sound, um, it might be uh, printing a, a page on your printer. Uh, but from a very high level, that's what computer programming is. It's uh, it's the uh, taking in inputs, uh, applying some logic, and then outputting an output. Now, some of the um, now none of us uh, speak the language of computers, um, but there's uh, several uh, computer programming languages out there. At the very low level, uh, we have machine code, and this is the closest to uh, what the computer actually speaks. Machine code is basically binary. It's it, um, the computer at, at the very lowest level. A computer only knows yes or no, uh, or ones and zeros. And so, um, machine code is just a series of ones and zeros, and uh, they are, uh, and uh, that's machine code. Um, I probably won't be touching much on that. Uh, I've done a little bit of it with uh, some embedded systems, but uh, for the most part, uh, you usually don't need to, to worry too much about machine code. The next level up from that is something called assembly. And assembly is something that might use a three or four letter identifier to uh, represent some command um, and uh, it's so it's just a little bit better than machine code, but uh, it's uh, still not quite what you might call a human readable. Uh, then the next level up from that is C, and C has been around for a very long time. Um, and some people today might still refer to C as a lower level programming languages uh, for the simple fact that within C, it's not uncommon to use a little bit of assembly or use a little bit of machine code. Um, but, uh, but C starts to form the foundation of uh, human readable programming languages where it uses actual words to represent things that uh, people might be able to understand. And then you have some of the higher level languages and there again there's a lot of them. I'm going to list a few of the popular ones here. We have uh, C++, uh, Java, C Sharp, and uh, that's, uh, that's how you say this here, it's C sharp, and then Objective-C, and so on and so on. Uh, now, something to note is that I've, I've, I've shown this this way because it, it, these are really built upon each other. So uh, assembly is built on top of machine code, C is built on top of that, so you can access assembly and machine code. And then all of these languages up here make use of or, or, or are extensions of C. So if it works in C, uh, it's, you can probably use it in one of the higher level languages in some form. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, just to go over some of these high level languages, uh, C++ is used on uh, many different operating systems. Um, it's been around for a while. Same thing with Java. Um, uh, right now, probably one of the more popular areas where you use Java is in the uh, um, in uh, phone apps for uh, Androids. 
Uh, so that's the language used there. Uh, C Sharp is one of the uh, yeah, kind of a newer kid on the block, um, but it's primarily uh, used in the um, on the Windows platform. Although there are some exceptions to that. Uh, Objective C is primarily used on the Mac, and it's uh, um, yeah, so it's primarily used on the Mac. And that uh, uh, if you want to do iOS development. Or Mac development, you're going to need to know a little bit of Objective C at some point. So that's uh, that's that's it for the main uh, programming languages that uh, at least that I'm going to talk about. Okay, some of the commonality between these. Um, first of all, the data types, um, and I'll get into this much uh, deeper in the next video. But uh, basically, there's some of the basic data types, integers. Uh, integers are whole numbers such as one, three, or well, or three. Or I meant to write two there. Um, but those are whole numbers, um, and all of the programming languages, uh, uh, all the high-level programming languages, they have some form of integer. They might use a little bit of different syntax, but uh, for the most part, they all have that data type. Uh, next, you have a float. Uh, and a float is a number that uh, includes a decimal place, such as 1.2, 2.3, 4.5. Um, there's other, uh, there's, uh, and, and all of your high level languages will have some form of float uh, data type. Um, next is a character, um, and that's uh, any kind of ANSI uh, character. Um, you think if you see it as a as a letter or symbol on your keyboard, uh, it's uh, it, it, a, an individual character. That's the that's the that data type. And then you have a string, and and uh, a string is actually isn't a base data type. It's actually an array of characters. But all of the high level languages make use of strings. And if you were to uh, type type out the phrase that you see in a lot of intro programming courses. Hello world. Hello, hello world is a string. Um, next, you have boolean, uh, or boolean, uh, however you like to pronounce it, um, and that's getting back down to the computer's language of true or false, one or zero, yes or no. It's it's one or the other, um, and most most. But most often, uh, you might refer to it as true or false, and that's the boolean boolean data type. Uh, next thing that's common for a lot of the high-level languages are loops, and we'll get into that probably in the third video. Um, and loops are you know if, for, and while loops. Um, all the high-level languages have very similar ways that they handle control loops. Um, all of the high-level languages have some, uh, some form of functions, or sometimes they call them methods. And what these are are little mini programs within the program. Uh, a function is something that takes in some data, or is just uh, uh, performs a function when it's when it's called, and then returns some value or changes some value somewhere, performs some function, and it's uh, and. Uh, you know, all, most uh, or, or almost all programs will make use of some functions in some form. Uh, next, uh, all of these, all the high-level uh, programs make use of something called classes or, or objects. And really, uh, an object is something that's created from a class at runtime. Uh, but what these are is think of these as reusable building blocks of a program. And I'll get into that a little, a little bit uh, next here. So, uh, talking about classes and objects is really, uh, that's really what object-oriented programming is about. Uh, up here I have a kind of a, a, uh, a kind of a, a branch tree showing uh, a hierarchy. Uh, let's go from the top. So, our main program, let's, let's assume we have a, some first-person shooter game. That's our that's our program. Now that program is going to have classes, and you think of what you're going to have in this game. You're going to have characters, and uh, characters would be represented by a cat class. And when the game's running, you might have an, uh, a main player object that's made from that main player class, 
and um, you'll have an environment uh, object that's created from the environment class and a vehicle, maybe you have a vehicle object that's created from the, the uh, vehicle class and something to note is that objects can be made up of other objects or be types of other objects so for example for character we might have a inventory object and a skills object uh, made from the inventory class and the skills class and uh, and so and so on and so on um, under inventory maybe we have a, a gun object and there might be uh, three different kinds of guns and those they're all but they're all made from the gun class but at, when they are created they're created as gun A or gun B or gun C um, the same thing with like the character you might have uh, you know multiple different kinds of characters but they could be all created from the same class it's just some of the input variables when it's created would change when it's created uh, so that's the basics of, and and really the, the power of this is is being able to reuse your code um, so if you let, let's say we have this inventory class and uh, and we go create a different game um, we can use that again and uh, it just it might just be a matter of changing some appearance somewhere and but it behaves exactly the same and be and that's really key uh, if you're especially if you're an indie developer is that to really uh, make uh, make good reuse of your code if you if you're going to take the time to write something make it so that you can reuse it again later so and um, next is the integrated development environment um, or, or called IDE and what that is is, is uh, there's they can vary from uh, they can have a lot of other features but when you get right down to it to have an integrated development uh, dev environment you have a, something some kind of code editor somewhere where you're actually going to type in the code and and they vary in their capability uh, many of them will automatically color code the code as you as you type it so that you can identify different pieces easily it might help you with indenting and things like that and then you have a linker and a linker is something uh, it, it might vary from language to language uh, but just like what I said in my last slide with the different classes you might have um, you know, a dozen different files all containing code each one for a different class and when you go to uh, put that all together that's that's you know, that's what it does it goes out and it links with uh, libraries some standard libraries that contain other code and bring it into the program and ball it all up into one uh, one file then the compiler is if you go back you know up to that upside down triangle I showed you um, and uh, uh, the, what the compiler does is it it converts that high level language down into that machine code uh, so it takes that 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 code that that some of us can read once we're familiar with the programming language it, and it turns it into just a series of ones and zeros in a nutshell that's what IDE is um, now some of the popular ones, uh, Visual Studio uh, is real popular and you can get free versions of it uh, uh, or you can get some very advanced versions for it that, that cost thousands of dollars. And mainly that's going to cover C Sharp, C++, Visual Basic, and F Sharp. Uh, and and there's, a, there's quite a bit of others that it covers but those are the main ones. Um, Eclipse is one that, that I've used for Java um, and it's a real popular Java IDE. Um, if you're going to get into Android development, uh, that might be one you want to take a look at. Uh, if you're developing on the Mac, Xcode is real popular, um, and now that can do C, C++, Objective-C. Um, probably some others as well that I'm not aware of. And then you have some specialty IDEs. Uh, for example, MonoDevelop is for Unity. That's the game engine we're going to be using here in, a, in some future series. Um, and in that you can do JavaScript, C Sharp, or something called Boo. Uh, I've never really used it, but I know it's there. 
another one I've used is uh, something called Code Warrior, and that's for free scale microprocessors. Uh, that's uh, that's mainly for like control systems, like you know, think of e your engine controller in your car and things like that. And I've used that with uh, machine code assembly, C and C plus plus. I left a plus off there. Um, so that's about it for the um, integrated development environment. All right. So in the next video. Uh, we're going to go over some of the uh, data types, just like I mentioned, and get more in depth on what the data types are, how the syntax changes from one language to the next, and uh, some examples of each one of those data types. So thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to visit my website. Uh, see the link down in the lower right-hand corner, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks.